and um, uh, you do a great job. The kids are great, the faculty is great, the administration is great, so thank you because education is so important. And I just want to acknowledge some people who are here, uh, our superintendent of all of the great next school <coughs> system, uh, Teresa Prendergast. Thank you, Senator. Which is an old, great New York Dutch name. Are you related to all those Prendergast? There is history. Yes. yes, very good. Uh, we have Christopher Gitz, he's the principal of Great Neck South. He is, you in the media will note, a very popular principal. Sometimes you go and you introduce the principal and there's silence. <laughs> but not here, that's good. And we have the student council members who are right behind me, including a good number of Spencers. <laughs> okay. Uh, so thank you. And we also have a pulmonologist from one of the great healthcare institutions, not just on Long Island, but in all of America, uh, Northwest. And we have Samir Kanjo, a Long Island resident, because he told me he went to St. Anthony's, a little further out, where I also have some people who work for me come from. So it's uh, good to be here. Now, let me um, say first, uh, why are we here? We're here today to try and curb a health crisis that has become an epidemic in New York, on Long Island, in the country. This is all about vaping, and vaping has become a real crisis. And the reason that we are here is this is a school that on its own has led a fight against vaping, and you will hear about that after I finish my remarks from both the principal, uh, Mr. Gitz, and uh, some of the students who led the fight. Because kids today, across America, are standing up and saying enough is enough. The idea was, when vaping first started, people said, well, maybe it's not so bad. Maybe it'll wean kids and adults off cigarettes. And it's, it doesn't have tar and not as much nicotine as cigarettes. We have found just the opposite. It itself has become an epidemic, and more and more young people are smoking because vaping is a pathway to smoking as bad as it is itself. And we have also seen that people actually become ill from vaping. Hundreds of New Yorkers have had to be rushed to the hospital because of vaping and 11 people have died in America because of vaping. So it's a serious, serious problem. So today, here at Great Neck South, I am unveiling a national plan that can get at the heart of the problem. The kid-friendly flavors and the lack of awareness among too many students that vaping is very bad for you. And today, this is more important than ever. New York State took the lead and said, we're going to ban the flavors. And a court just said, no, you can't. So the need for a federal law is more important than ever, ever before. Senator, why don't you show the camera? Now, I will, I will. Where are they? I've got so many papers here. Let's see, where are they? Here. I will. Thank you. You can just keep that. This is Mike Ionelli who works for me. He's from Wanto High School. In any case, uh, this, let me just give you some statistics here because this has become a huge problem. When you hear the statistics, it's going to make your hair stand on edge. The use of e-cigarettes among high schoolers in one year alone nearly doubled from 11.7% to 20.8%. That means there was a staggering 1.5 million more young people using e-cigarettes in 2018 than 2017. And if we do nothing, you can be sure the numbers for 2019 will be even higher and more troubling. And this idea that vaping would reduce tobacco use, overall tobacco use in the same year among high school students 
jumped from 19.6% to 27.1%. We had been making great progress in discouraging all people, all people of all ages, but particularly younger people from smoking. Our aiming the cigarettes at young people, people even younger than the people here at Great Neck South, but middle schoolers. And so they don't just talk about vaping. They talk about these flavors. Here are three. One is called Drippin' Whip. One is called Vanilla Milk and Cookies. And one is called Candy King. Do you think they're aiming those cigarette, those flavors at 65 year olds? I doubt it. Here are some of the flavors you can take a look at. Let me show them. Can you guys see? You see these. So, all right, enough of that. You did a good now. Um, so we have to do something about this. There are not 11 deaths. The number keeps going up. There were 18 deaths. That's CDC. So two things that I am asking for. This is a one-two punch aimed at vape. One, at the federal level. Ban the flavors that aim these cigarettes at kids in high school, middle school, even younger. Ban it. And the good news is we have bipartisan legislation. This is not a partisan issue. We have bipartisan legislation sponsored by Senator Durbin, a Democrat of Illinois, and Senator Murkowski, a Republican of Alaska, to ban the flavors. And it's much better to ban them at a federal level than a state level. Because if you could have some store owner or someone else cross the border, go to Pennsylvania, if they don't have a ban, even if New York does, and then sell the cigarettes here. So we should ban them federal. And second, I am asking the relevant agencies, the Health and Human Services Department, the CDC, the FDA, and the Surgeon General to come together and put together a nationwide plan of education. We very much need education because 80% of middle and high school students survey do not believe that e-cigarette use is harmful to their health. That's just not true. I'm sure here in Great Neck South that is not true. But across the country it is because most of the students haven't done what these kids and this administration <laughs> has done. And just as we had a national education campaign about smoking, you've all seen those ads about people who smoke, we should do the same thing with kids with vaping, with public service ads and everything else to discourage it. If we can do those two things, we have a real chance of decre dramatically decreasing uh, vaping. So I am glad to be here at Great Neck South. On his own, he had a uh, friend whose kid was really suffering from vaping. And talked to the student body about how it affected that family. The kids, the students, on their own, were very moved by the principal's words and they took actions into their own hands. And you'll hear about it. They began their own campaign inside Great Neck South to com combat the scourge of vaping. And I want to salute our high school kids. I brought a group of students from Scarsdale High School two years ago to meet the head of the FDA, Dr. Gottlieb. I brought kids from Scarsdale High School to meet him, to tell him how bad this was, and that began the federal government uh, to look into particularly the use of these horrible uh, um, uh, flavors aimed at inducing kids to do something harmful to themselves. So our students are part of the major campaign to do this, and no school personifies that better than Great Neck South. So I thank everybody for letting me uh, be here. And now we will hear from Dr. Gitz. No more, I say. Okay, questions first on this subject from the media. Senator, uh, which flavors would be left over by the time the ban is? Would this leave just menthol? And second to that, we've seen a number of lawsuits that have been filed recently mm -hmm. against Juul, the major manufacturer, both by Long Island residents and even now by a school district out here in Suffolk County. So uh, just first, what flavors would be yeah, not The prohibited? only flavor that would not be prohibited is menthol, which we have seen as not um, aimed at kids. Mint would be banned. The question, everyone agrees all the others. There was a debate about menthol and mint, and what we decided to do was ban the mint 
because that had much more reach into the youth uh, than uh, menthol. And some of these lawsuits that have been filed, do you support The lawsuits it? are great. I support every one of them. Um, these companies knew what they were doing. They were trying to make money. Making money on the back of kids' health is an outrageous thing to do, and I hope the courts would <coughs> stop them. But court, court decisions take a long time, can be appealed, etc. We need to pass our legislation. The court cases are no substitute for the legislation. What's the timeline on your legislation? We hope to get it done by uh, the time our, we end our session, December 31st. Can we hear from some of the kids? Oh, ragdoll. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Who's heard of the Four Seasons? Few of you. Jersey Boys, you heard of that? That's them. That's the last. They don't know the four seasons. <laughs> can we hear from some of the kids on just how serious the problem was at one Any point? I mean, can they describe what it was like at their something? school? Okay, on the job. Ragdoll, ooh, that's ragdoll. Just kind of, if you could describe, uh, you know, at one point, at its worst, what troubled you the most? Was it all, you know, was it tough to, are you afraid to go to the bathroom at school? I mean, what was going on? Well, I'm not going to say that it's uh, uh, an extremely serious thing here at Greenwich South especially. I feel like the students are very aware and they're very um, conscious about their decisions. Dr. Gitz always pushes the idea of making good decisions and I feel like the students here really take that to heart. However, in other schools, really all over the state of New York and all around the country, it's become a serious epidemic. I mean, the countless illnesses and now 18 deaths, it's, it's really just adding up. Um, 18 is enough. There shouldn't be any more. Good. Well said. Tell <laughs> your name. I'm Spencer Kern. Spell your last name on your TV so they can K E R N. K E R N. In April of 2015, I lost my grandmother to lung cancer, and it was a very unfortunate time for my family. And now, seeing the rise of vaping and that it could cause this future within our youth, and seeing that my friends and other students and teenagers can make this future and doom their future. I see it. Um, talking to students one-on-one, -on -one, seeing what we can do to stop the problem. And what did the flyer say? Is there like a pledge from yeah. the student body? Uh, so can right now, it's that? just the facts. It yeah. says, right. you kill. Bring it, take it down. Good. Here, buddy, you keep talking. Oh, okay. Uh, so it says, vaping can kill. Is what it says. Uh, yeah. The facts are in, vaping can kill. Would you say the peer pressure is kind of going the other way now? Like, what's the mood? Because, it, you know, maybe a, a year ago it was like, oh, come vape with me in the bathroom, and now, you know, I would definitely say it's switched up. Um, you know, I can't really speak for everyone, but I know many of my friends, uh, if they see someone, they'll just be like, don't do that. Like, even one rip can hurt you. And, like, that's not something that I would have heard of a year ago, and I'm, I'm very proud of our students and uh, our student body. Yeah. That's great. Good. Very good. Other questions? Okay. This subject. Um, alcohol kills more people and has a similar marketing strategy. I know that a uh, whiskey manufacturer is doing whiskey pods right now, similar to Tide Pods, to market specifically to children. Do you feel like this legislation needs to be expanded to other legal Well, terms? I wouldn't expand this legislation, but if, when, if alcohol, you know, there are pretty strict laws about alcohol and uh, drinking underage. It's tough to enforce them, but it's something we should look at. Not for this legislation. This. We don't want to come encumber this. this. We think this can get right through the Congress pretty quickly. Okay? Off topic? Uh, off topic, all right. We finished with this topic. Okay, we're going to limit off topics here because we have all the kids. Senators, I'm sure you're aware National Grid has been denying uh, hookups of gas to thousands of New Yorkers. Is there anything that could be done on the federal level to protect these people who are really This is this is a state on. issue. I haven't delved into the details, I will, but it's a state issue, not a federal. Could you comment on Trump's Syria? Uh, what the, what mm -hmm. the latest is on yeah, Trump's Look, Syria? I thought the Kurds, the Kurds have been first. They have been. Aside from our soldiers, the number one reason that ISIS is decimated and to abandon them now is bad from a security point of view and it's bad from a moral point of view. People go to bat for you, you don't pull the rug out from under them. And I'm glad that there's been broad bipartisan support, Democrat and Republican, saying don't abandon the Kurds because if left to their own devices, the Turks could very well massacre them. Okay. Thank you, Thank everybody. You. Have a nice day. Thank you.